Earlier today, billionaire business leaders flocked to a policy summit uh, slash fundraising event for former President Trump in D.C., all with the help of South Carolina Senator and potential Trump VP, VP pick Tim Scott. Contrast that with Biden's out-of-touch Virginia fundraiser last night, where he handed Bill and Hillary Clinton the microphone. Hillary played the victim, of course, comparing her 2016 campaign to Cassandra in Greek mythology, saying, quote, she was blessed by being able to see the future, but cursed to never be believed. All right, adding to that crazy, her husband Bill said that Biden, quote, has earned the right to serve. Now, come on, Bill, it's not a right, it's a privilege. Here are three action outkick host and Fox News contributor, Tommy Laren. Tommy, what do you make of all of this? It's a jump ball. Like, have at it. You can talk about Bill and Hillary. Hillary's just gasping to, for relevancy still. And then the, the money is important to both of these candidates. Yeah, of course, fundraising is important no matter which candidate you're talking about. They're going to need money to get out the vote. Of course, the RNC needs money to streamline its get out the vote efforts. That's something that I've been talking about for quite some time, as have you both talking about getting out the vote on the Republican side. It's one thing to have enthusiasm at rallies. Those people also need to be registered to vote, and they need to have a plan to either vote early or a plan to vote on Election Day. So that's going to be a big part of the spending, and Donald Trump has got to raise money, as does Joe Biden. But I think what's interesting interesting here. Whether you look at that event last weekend in Hollywood, where you have to bring out Jack Black and Jimmy Kimmel, and you have to have former President Obama there as Joe Biden's visiting angel to help him <laughs> off the stage, I think one thing also becomes really clear that Joe Biden relies on others to raise money and to get butts in seats. Because I think we all know when Joe Biden has an event by himself, he doesn't stay long, he can't speak well, and he can't get people in the room. So he has to rely on people like the Obamas or the Clintons or celebrities to get any energy or enthusiasm for him. And that's something that Donald Trump does not have a problem with. Donald Trump can go to any stage in any part of the country, even if it's a blue area, and he can get a crowd. Now, like I said, are those people registered to vote? That's going to be the challenge that we, we on the Republican side have to work on. What do you make of the tightening polls, Tommy? Is that just the ebb and flow? Is there something else going on there? Listen, I don't pay as much attention to the polls, even when Donald Trump is ahead in some of these swing states, because as we can recall in 2016, Hillary Clinton was ahead almost through the entire cycle, if not the entire cycle, all the way up to election night. So I don't put too much stake into the polls. A lot can change between now and then. I think the candidate on the Democrat side, quite frankly, is going to change. So there's going to be a lot of shakeups between now and November. Hang on tight, because I think what we're seeing now is not going to be the same story come October even. All right, we want to get your take on the cover story from New York Magazine about women in the GOP. Here's the title. Are Republican women okay? It's causing quite a stir on social media with critics who are conservative calling it out for being sexist and hypocritical. I, I'm really upset that, you know, of what some magazine based in this real just steaming hellhole has to say about conservatives, Tommy, aren't you? Conservatives, but particularly conservative women. I mean, this is nothing new. I think it really kicked off when Sarah Palin was the vice the vice presidential pick. Uh, I think that that's when this demonization and the cheapening of conservative women really was mainstreamed. And of course, we know the awful way that they treated our first lady, Melania Trump. So conservative women are never going to get the love and affection on the magazine covers that the liberal women are. But I'll tell you this, they need to win. And I say they, Democrats need to win women and Republicans need to win women. I mean, it's going to be suburban women and mothers that are going to be right. big stakeholders in this next election, and their votes are going to matter. But just as Joe Biden said, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black, it really feels like the leftist media is saying, if you don't vote Democrat, right. you ain't a woman, which is bizarre to me because yeah, the Democrats right. don't even know what a woman is on any given day. Good. I'll just say this. Bless your heart. Not you, Tommy, but that <laughs> jackass or jackasses who wrote that article. And I think at least one of them was a woman. I guess. Tommy. Thanks, thanks. Tommy.